The Experimental Lakes area is a research station in a remote part of northwestern Ontario, Canada. We were set up back in 1968 because there was an understanding that we wanted to do field-based research to understand some of the impacts that humans were having on freshwater systems. So my name is Pauline Girard. I'm the executive director of the Experimental Lakes area. Right from the beginning, we were designed to do whole ecosystem experiments on small boreal lakes. So not just water chemistry or fish populations or insect populations, but how all of those things are connected. It's absolutely unique. It's unique in terms of the kind of work that we do and the types of work we do. 50 years on, we're the only place in the world with the legal rights and 50 years of experience doing this kind of work. Collaboration is really key to the way we work. We do whole ecosystem studies that are bringing in lots of skills and expertise and are really designed to make change. And we couldn't do that by ourselves. We need to do that by involving the policymakers right from the beginning, people from the region that understand the region, as well as academics. We do it to understand the world better to be able to make change. And the design of our studies and the research questions right from the beginning are really trying to get to those questions around how can we protect the environment, manage the environment better. We do a remarkable amount of things to our freshwater that we don't even think about. I don't know how many products I put on every day, you know, whether it's sunscreen or, or hairspray or whatever. A lot of that ends up in our wastewater treatment plants. Much of it is not treated appropriately, and so it ends up downstream from cities and towns and urban centers. We try and understand the impacts that those chemicals have, and then make recommendations about what can be done to keep them out of our watersheds, or to help lakes and rivers and wetlands be more resilient. Rain that falls on the land flows across landscapes and ends up in oceans. And so what we're doing here impacts marine life, but also what we're learning here can be translated into kind of what we can learn and the research that's being done in oceans. For the last nine years, we've been doing a series of studies looking at oil, really what happens when oil is spilled in freshwater environments and how can we best clean it up. And that study started with industry partners, government partners, academic partners, and communities. Another kind of spin-off piece of work that's come out of that is oil spill response toolkit for the circumpolar north. And so based on the findings related to cleanup, we've been working with uh, Natural Resources Canada and a company who can use satellite imagery and take kind of the cleanup findings to design a web platform that communities could use if there's an oil spill to identify what the best cleanup method might be for a certain geography, identify when it would be best to be applied and what needs to be done. And so that is a perfect example of how our work will impact marine life and, and fisheries and wildlife there as well. Mm -hmm.